now that we've looked at masses in chemical reactions when we did both the conservation of mass as well as the stoichiometry puzzles with the hydrates, we're now going to do a limiting reagent and percent yield ones. So our reaction here is the precipitation reaction that's going to occur when potassium iodide reacts with lead to nitrate. First thing you're going to do is write the nice balanced equation, and then you're going to do four different trials. So here we're going to start out and we're going to weigh out a beaker. And make sure you pause it at this point and record the mass of the beaker so that you know what the mass of your compound is going to be. Because when you hit play again, they're going to add some lead nitrate or lead 2 nitrate, and you're going to have an increase in mass. Make sure you write down those two values so you know how much of the lead 2 nitrate you have. And then we're going to add a water. Water isn't relevant in terms of the mass. It's just the medium that the reaction is going to occur in. And then we're going to come over here, and we are going to have some potassium iodide. So our potassium iodide is one molar potassium iodide. And you can go over here, and you can actually take and read the volume of the potassium iodide right here and figure out what that volume is. If you've got the volume and the molarity, you can use your volume in liters multiplied by the molarity to get the moles. And now at this point, you know how much lead nitrate you can get moles of that, how many moles of potassium iodide you have in this reaction, and you also know what your balanced equation is, so you should be able to predict how much of each you have, how much product you're going to make, and even how much is left over. So we're going to take and we're going to mix them together. So we're going to get a new beaker, we're going to put our potassium iodide in there, and add the lead to nitrate. Okay, at this point, one of these has run out first. We have an incomplete reaction, and I need you're going to have to do the math on all of those, and you're going to do trial one, and then you're going to continue up to trial four where you're going to vary here, particularly the amount of the potassium iodide, and you're going to get a different amount of product each time. So once you have done that, and you want to write down what it is your measurements have predicted, so make sure you write down how much um, lead to nitrate you start with, how much potassium iodide you start with, how much lead to iodide, iodide should be produced, and which one you think is your limiting reagent. So the next part of this, we're actually going to figure out the mass of the product produced. So if you go back to trial one and you have your data for that and you press play for trial, trial one, you can click this little arrow to move that up and down. And it's just going to repeat what you did so that you remember what your numbers are. And again, add the water for the medium. And then we're going to take and mix the lead to nitrate with potassium iodide. We know what the volume is here and you know how much you have. And when you take and you are going to complete this reaction, so this one's going to be done, what they're going to do now is they're going to take and they're going to do filtration. So we're going to take the solid lead to iodide and filter it out. So we're going to take and weigh a piece of um, filter paper. We're going to pour the solution in. So any leftover reactants that we might have are going to be in this liquid down here. We're going to let sit overnight and dry. And after it sits overnight and dries, we're going to take it off. We're going to reweigh it. We're going to make sure that we subtract the mass of the filter paper so that we know how much product we actually made. So remember here, this is our lead to iodide product. And in here is going to be the leftover reactants from the actual reaction. And so your job is to take and calculate or find the mass of the lead to iodide that was actually produced, find out how much you had in your prediction, do that for each of the four trials, and do your percent error. So the last thing you're going to do is you're going to take the reaction mixture that you had left over from the filtration, and you're going to have two options. You're either going to take and add some lead nitrate to it, or you're going to add some potassium iodide to it. And whatever you have excess of it should react with the other one. So if I had excess, for example, potassium iodide, then the lead nitrate should react with it, and I should take and get a nice product. But I didn't get anything. So maybe we should take trial one and add some potassium iodide. So if I add potassium iodide to the leftover aqueous solution from reaction one, George's going to take the stuff left over again, put it in the container throw in some potassium iodide, and we're going to get a reaction. So this should tell us here that the lead to nitrate 
was in excess in trial one and potassium iodide was used up. It was the limiting reagent, and that should be consistent with the data that you have. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go through and make sure you understand how the last set of tests confirm what your limiting reagent was and what your reagent was in excess.